Look, um, AI is in an incredible time right now. I, I'd like to say it's the most transformational technology that we've seen in our lifetime. And we're really at the very early stages of it. So a uh, huge congratulations to our friends at Oracle. I mean, I think they're a fantastic company and to see you know, the types of numbers that they're talking about. But it really is what we're seeing on a daily basis. When we're talking to customers about all of the AI use cases that are out there, whether you're talking about training the largest language models or you're talking about infrastructure and helping all of our businesses and research and medicine. There's so much demand out there. And, you know, we are very much part of, you know, the entire infrastructure around that. So it's great to see that, um, you know, some of that momentum is now showing through in very large, um, you know, order patterns. Well, let me just get back to what Oracle says about AMD chips. They really like your chips because they do something like 2x when it comes to power, price, et cetera. I don't know the exact way to describe it. You probably would. But they say that you guys outpace rivals in that regard. That's a story that I feel like hasn't really gotten out there. Can you kind of drill down a bit on that and what it is that the oracles of the world and anybody else says, you know what, I'll go with AMD over, who knows, NVIDIA, uh, Broadcom, whoever. Well, first of all, we love the partnership with Oracle. You know, the data center business providing the highest performing chips uh, for the cloud uh, manufacturers as they are, you know, powering all these workloads is what we do every single day. And our job is just to push the bleeding edge of technology. So, you know, Oracle, we've had a partnership for many, many years, really over the last seven, eight, nine years, uh, we've been, uh, you know, steadily increasing our work with them. Uh, we're all over their CPU infrastructure, which is uh, super critical. And then and on this AI, they've been um, the first to adopt many of our chips. We're very, very excited with what we're doing together with them. And I think it's just an example of how deep partnerships are so important. I mean, when we talk to all of these, you know, AI, you know, cloud leaders, it's really about, you know, how can we make one plus one greater than three? And it's how we take our technology plus their infrastructure, you know, really uh, trying to get this in the hands of those who need as much AI computing power as possible. So this is a great example. I mean, we've grown a ton in our data center business. It's more than half of our business today. And the key is we want to provide tremendous value, but also a long-term roadmap that allows you to think out, you know, three to five years uh, to build the best of what you need for data center infrastructure. Well, this news about OpenAI striking the $300 billion purchase of compute power and, and the cloud infrastructure products that, that Oracle has is Definitely a fascinating headline, especially considering that recently Sam Altman was heard saying that AI is in a little bit of maybe a, a short term bubble. What adjective would you use to describe the demand you are seeing for your chips right now? Uh I would say, Liz, um, you know, there's a lot of conversation about what's happening this quarter and next quarter. Mm -hmm. I think we have to look over the long term, and I think that's what you've seen from, you know, some of the recent uh, market projections. I mean, we've said over the last uh, few months, we've actually said, you know, we believe that the AI infrastructure for silicon, which is, you know, our chips, uh, will be over 500 billion over the next uh, couple of years. And that's just an amazingly large number if you think about the growth rates um, there. And what that means is that, you know, people just need more compute. Like compute is now the way we unlock intelligence uh, for businesses. And from that standpoint, um, everybody wants more compute. We want to invest more. So I don't think there's anything that we would say is a bubble. I, I would actually say we see accelerating demand uh, for AI. And this is an opportunity for partnership, which is uh, so, so critical because there's no one company that can do it all. Actually, you know, what we find, especially with partners like, you know, Oracle, Microsoft, you know, Google, Amazon, it's it's really how we work together and really um, come up with the best solution for um, our joint customers. Okay, so you don't see an AI bubble, you see accelerating demand. I think that's an important headline here. And to that point, what's the demand for your products, for your chips right now coming from China? And I bring this up because, as we all know, after a couple of months of saying, President Trump saying you can't sell this these fancy chips to China, he agreed to let you and your rival, NVIDIA, get licenses to sell chips to China in exchange for a 15 percent cut to the U.S. government of the revenues you get from your China sales. Let me start with uh, the revenue that you expect to get and what you're hearing from Chinese customers. 
Well, Liz, you know, let me start first with saying that, you know, this administration has been really proactive in working with us in terms of the technology industry uh, to figure out how we ensure that um, American AI actually um, leads the world. And we're very thankful for that. I was had the opportunity to be at the White House uh, last week, and that was a big topic of conversation, is how do we accelerate the rate and pace of innovation for U.S. AI? Um, China is an important market to us. You know, our semiconductors, our chips are also important for national security, so it is very much a balance. Uh, we're thankful that the administration has uh, really come up with, um, you know, what I think is a very good balance to ensure that, you know, our chips, um, we call them MI-308s, uh, have the opportunity to be sold in China. We're now working with our Chinese customers. I think, in general, there's a desire to continue to, you know, partner in the AI stack, and we just have to work through that as we go through the next few quarters. But I think the key thing here is we want to make sure that there's leadership in the American AI stack. And the um, administration has really uh, worked with us jointly to figure out how to do that. Glad you brought that up, because today, the White House officer for science and technology, he was speaking and testifying before the Senate Commerce Committee on President Trump's AI action plan. And he, he referenced exactly that, that, as you just said, you're doing healthcare, you're doing all kinds of different sector business with your chips. Here's what he said about how important it is for American technology to stay in the leadership position. Listen. We want all those applications to be built on top of the American stack, meaning fine-tuning our American models, running them on our American chips. And the threat we face is that if we aren't the standard around the world, those, those models and those, appli those applications will be fine-tuned on adversary models, running on adversary chips, and that's not a long-term solution for the U.S. So this is a different tone from what some China hawks say is a problem, because if you give this type of technology, let's just say you sell some of your great chips to them, they will basically tear them down, look at them, and then copy them. Are you not worried at all about that? Well, first of all, I have to say, uh, Liz, I completely agree wholeheartedly with the comments that Director Kratzius uh, made. Mm -hmm. I think the AI action plan that has been put out by the administration is actually an excellent blueprint for what it takes for America to lead. And as I said, it's a balance. You know, the most important thing that we can do, I mean, America leads in AI today, and we need to run fast and run even faster. And uh, the amount, having more um, sort of the rest of the world really relying on our technology stack actually helps us run faster. And so it is very much a balance. I think we've found a good balance, uh, you know, frankly. I mean, we are innovating incredibly fast. We've taken what used to be a, uh, a cycle where we would put out sort of new generations every two years. We've now shrunk that in half. And so now we're putting out new generations every year of this technology, pushing the bleeding edge. And the fact that we want you know, to have more of the world using our AI stack, and this administration is going to help us do that, I think is, is an excellent partnership. Well, we're showing pictures of you with President Trump, I believe, in the Oval Office. Uh, boy, you, you have taken on a new role in many ways, and that is one sort of, of tech diplomat, because it's a, it's a fine line you've got to walk in protecting your shareholders, and you want the revenue to come to your shareholders, but also dealing with a very supportive but firm-handed Trump administration. How many times have you been to the White House this year, and how does that compare to past years? Well, there's no question, Liz. Uh, first of all, uh, we had a, a great meeting um, at the at the White House uh, last week. Right, you were we had there. the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, Yes, we had the opportunity to attend. Um, the first lady chaired the uh, AI education, you know, White House uh, panel, and then we had um, a number of technology leaders uh, together um, at the president's invitation. And I would say, look, it's um, it's really exciting to have at a seat at the most important table in the world, and that's the way I look at it. Uh, we are building, you know, we have um, now we're in a place where semiconductors and AI are national priority for every single country, uh, certainly for the United States. Uh, we lead in the technology, and we want to make sure that we are doing this in public-private partnerships. So I think there are plenty of opportunities. We're a global company. We sell all over the world, and it's super important uh, for us to have those relationships everywhere. But no question that um, in partnership with the U.S. government and in partnership with this administration, we can actually accelerate the rate and pace. And I can tell you, um, if I think about just how much progress has been made in the last, um, you know, 
seven or eight months, uh, particularly around things like U.S. manufacturing and getting more of our leading edge technology in the U.S. I mean, there's been tremendous progress as a result of some of the, um, the actions that have been recently taken.